welcome to today's video. I'm so excited about this video actually like I've been planning to film this video for months I've just been getting everything together, you know Just so I could get this video up for you guys So today as you could tell by the title is a wet and wild do's or don'ts video now If you've been with me since the beginning that I started my channel then you know that I did a do's and don'ts on the brand Rimmel I Stopped doing that series after that video if you guys want me to do this series again let me know, but basically it's where I pick a brand and talk about the do's and the don'ts within that brand. The products I love, that I do recommend, and the products I don't. So yeah, if you guys want to see um, more videos like this, let me know and let me know what brands you want them on. But today is going to be Wet n Wild. Now out of all my makeup, I have the most from Wet n Wild. I have like a very, very like broad selection of what the brand offers. Um, I've tried almost everything from them, so that's why I'm here today to talk about all the products I own from them and just give you guys a glimpse of what I love from Wet n Wild and what I don't. So let's just get right on into it. I just um, finished filming this look. It should be already up on my channel, so make sure to go check it out. It's a full face using just Wet n Wild products, so you can go check out how to get this look um, using Wet n Wild products and then, you know... You can come back here and we'll talk about the actual products, you know, my opinions on them and stuff like that. I really love how my face makeup turned out. I love the face products in that I used in this tutorial. They're some of my favorites. So yeah, let's just get right on into it. I'm going to start with this. This is the Wet n Wild Cover All Primer. And it's not my favorite primer of all time, but I actually really, really do like this primer. I recommend using a very little amount, just a nice, light, thin layer, um, because I feel like this primer just works best when you apply a very small amount. Um, it's very inexpensive, like all these products are. I'm not going to mention that over and over. All these products are under like $5, which is amazing. I love that about Wet n Wild. They're also all cruelty free. So I'm just going to mention that now so I don't have to keep mentioning it during the video. But this primer is basically a moisturizing primer. Nothing more, nothing less. On the back it says that it refines pores, fills fine lines, brightens complexions, and even skin tone. I don't notice that. Honestly, to me, it's just a nice smoothing moisturizing primer. It's great for dry, oily skin, you know, combination, whatever, normal, um, anything like that. I just think it's a nice base, you know, it just makes your makeup apply like smooth and stuff, but it, I don't think it fills in anything or stuff like that, but I do really like this primer. We have the Cover All Foundation. This is the only foundation I've tried from Wet n Wild, but I absolutely love this foundation. This is the foundation I'm wearing right now. Obviously, this color is way too dark to, for me, so I have to mix it with the white foundation, but just get your right shade. Um, they have expanded their shade selection, which is good. It's not the best shade selection, but if you can find your shade, I highly recommend this foundation. It gives amazing coverage, gives a like satin-ish look. It doesn't get oily throughout the day. It, it's not drying at the same time, so I think all skin types would like this. It has great coverage, under $5. You know, it's just such a beautiful foundation. Um, lots of people compare it to the Estee Lauder Double Wear uh, and the Milani foundation. I think it's a great one. I highly recommend it. I haven't used it in a while, but every time I use it, I just remember how much I really love it. It's an excellent foundation. I highly recommend it. Okay, Wet n Wild concealers. I love, for the most part, the ones I have. The Wet n Wild Highlight and Concealing Pen. This is their Illuminati Concealer. I have mine in the shade Ivory Into You. I love this. Definitely, like, my top... One of my top concealers after the Maybelline Fit Me. As you can see, I've used this one all up. It's the concealer I'm wearing today. Obviously, I'm wearing most of these products because it was a full face wet and mold tutorial. Um, this concealer gives a nice luminous look to the skin, very brightening. It makes other concealers blend beautifully, which I like to mix it with other concealers. But it's not a dewy finish you know it gives more of a matte dewy finish if that makes sense it's really weird but it looks beautiful under the eyes it doesn't accentuate fine lines or anything like that it's super inexpensive and I love 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 this concealer I use it so fast I hate the applicator because you just like waste so much product with this little twisty thing that's the only con I have about it but the actual formula is on point and then the other concealer I have is the Come Correct Celebrity Concealer. This is a very thick formula compared to the Illuminati. That one's not as thick. This is super thick. 
I would recommend this for acne or if you have really really bad dark circle like under eye circles I would just apply the tiniest bit because the smallest amount goes the longest way and I have mine in the shade medium golden it is a bit too dark for me right now but I did use it on my acne and stuff and it covers everything beautifully without making them look dry or breaking me out or anything like that so I really do like this if you need like a super high coverage concealer I have the wet and wild cover all pressed powder now the only reason I hit pan on this is I actually used it a couple years ago for Halloween and I really needed like my whole face to be this light so I applied it everywhere but it's a nice powder not my favorite I wouldn't like recommend it to the moon and back you know like it, it's it's all right if you're looking for really inexpensive powder I would simply just get like the fit me or the Rimmel stay matte I would kind of skip on this it's not my favorite but it is still a good one it doesn't make my makeup like crease or anything it sets it nicely so I don't have like complaints about it but it's not like the best thing I've ever tried if that makes sense these on the other hand oh my god I cannot stop recommending them they're so so good these are the wet and wild um, Mega Glow contouring palettes. I am obsessed over these. I always mention them I'm always telling you guys go out and buy these because they are my favorite this shade right here is actually my all-time favorite contour shade I actually used this shade right here to set my under eyes and this shade to contour and it's my all-time favorite contouring um, Little duo here, and then they also have a deeper shade This is the shade caramel toffee as you see, there's a banana shade and then a nice chocolatey contour shade. This one's too dark for me, so I never use it. But this one in the shade Dolce de Leche, I always use. It's such a beautiful contour shade, like the right shade. Not too cool, not too warm, you know. And this under eye shade just brightens and sets the under eyes so, so nicely. I would just get this and skip on the powder because this one is really nice for setting the under eyes as well. These contour palettes are so bomb. Get your hands on these right away. They are like under $5 and they compare to like high-end contour kits. They're amazing, so creamy, so buttery, so pigmented, I highly recommend. So yeah, I can't stop raving about those because they're just that good. All right, for bronzer, this is actually the only wet and mild bronzer I have. This is in the shade Ticket to Brazil. Um, it's a nice bronzer. It's really warm. It's what I'm wearing right now. It's actually really, really pretty. It blends out super pretty. It's not my favorite bronzer. It's a little too... It's a little too warm for my liking, but I still use it a lot because it just blends out effortlessly. If you're looking for a really nice warm bronzer, this is a nice one. It does have like shimmer in it, but it doesn't like, it's not super shimmery on the face. It gives more of a nice sheen. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. All right, Wet n Wild blushes. I have two here. I have one of their old formula and one of their new. The one in the old formula, I have the shade Mellow Wine. This is hella pigment. If you don't just like lightly dab into this and then like tap off excess like no other, you'll look like a clown when you apply it, so be careful. But they're so pigmented. They blend out nicely. Even if you apply too much, it will blend out really nicely, and I really love them. But this one is my all-time favorite shade from them. This is the shade Rose Champagne. This is actually one of my top, probably top two in my top two blushes right after Luminoso. It's the blush I'm wearing right now. It's just so, so beautiful. Doesn't look like much on the in the pan, but on the skin it just gets a nice glow. If you're pale like me, I highly recommend this blush. It's super gorgeous and it gives a nice sheen to the cheeks as well. Now it's time to talk about Wet n Wild highlighters. And is this kind of crazy how I have six highlighters from Wet n Wild? Yeah, I think it is. You don't even need six highlighters to begin with, and I have six just from Wet Wild, but let's get started. The first one I have here is actually named a bronzer, but I'm going to mention it in my highlighters because this is obviously not a bronzer. This is the same formula as the bronzer I showed you earlier, the um, Ticket to Brazil shade, but this one's in the shade Reserve Your Cabana, and as you can see, it's a very light powdery shade. People rave about this. I don't really see the hype with it. To me, it's more of a powder, not a highlight. It's really nice um, to wipe by, wipe off bake with. It reminds me a lot of the hourglass powders, but it's not a strobing highlight. But to me, it's nothing really that special. This next one is the Wet n Wild Illuminating Palette in the shade Catwalk Pink. It's really nice. I love the concept of it that you get four different highlight shades, you know, in one palette. I love it, and you can also mix them all together for a nice pinky highlight. But it's not my favorite formula. To me, it's kind of powdery and chalky. It's a good palette, but not my favorite. I, the other highlighters I have from Wet Wand that I'm about to mention are a lot better, and I would just go with these and skip on this. Okay, next I have their, um, uh, what would you call this, uh, Shimmer Palettes. 
I have both, uh, I have these two shades right here, the shade I'll Have a Cosmo and Boozy Brunch. This was more of a rosy shade and this is more of a golden shade. These two are both gorgeous. I would highly recommend both of these if you're looking for really inexpensive highlights. They compare to high-end formulas, they're gorgeous, and the... Like, the way they look on the skin is absolutely amazing. I highly recommend both of these. And look how much product you get. Like, you'll never go through that in a million years. So I highly recommend these two right here. Um, Boozy Brunch is definitely my favorite. This one's a little less pigmented, but they're both super nice. Next highlighter that I have is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals. This is what this looks like. Isn't this beautiful? Like, if the packaging wasn't, like, plastic... I would say, like if you covered up the name of this, just showed me this, I would say this is a high-end powder. The way this like swatches too, like the way this blends everything, I would say this was a luxurious um, product just because it's so pretty, how it looks, how it blends, how it applies, how it everything formula to how it looks in the pan, everything is gorgeous about it. Highly recommend these powders if you can find them. These are one of the best highlighters I've ever tried. Ever, hands down. And the last highlighter from Wet n Wild is the Mega Glow Highlighting Gold Bar. This is the same story with the one I just showed you, Precious Petals. This, like, it just swatches and applies to the skin like a high-end product. It's right here. Um, I love the shade of this. This is the highlighter I'm wearing right now, and it is so beautiful. These don't look chunky on the skin. They just apply gorgeous. It even has like a mirror inside, like a little slidey thing. I highly recommend that highlighter as well. Okay, next we have the Wet n Wild Eyeshadow Primer. This is what this looks like. This is part of their Photo Focus collection. This is one of the best eyeshadow primers I've ever tried. I think it's very comparable to the Urban Decay Primer Potion. Very similar formula and it's like under $5. It primes the eyes beautifully, makes sure your eyeshadow doesn't crease, and makes sure it lasts all day. So I really highly recommend this eyeshadow primer if you're looking for a nice inexpensive one. All right, moving on to some eyeshadow. Um, first of all, their singles. I have quite a couple of these. These are their two powder ones. I have the shade Creme Brulee, which I love for setting my primer down. It's beautiful for that. It blends out really nicely. And then what I have on my lower lash line is this shade right here. This is the shade Cheeky. It's just a nice purpley mauve shade, and I love their singles. Amazing formula. And I have a bunch of their glitters. I have this gold one in the shade Brass. You know, I've you guys know I've talked about this before, and I really like it. And then I have these two, which I haven't opened yet, but I already know I'm going to love the formula because I love that gold one. I have the shade Bleached and the shade Spiked. That's what these. As for the rest of their eyeshadows, I have quite a few more palettes. I have the Wet n Wild Coming In Latte palette. This is what I mainly used on my eyes today. It's a nice-ish palette, not my favorite. These shimmer shades, they like look nice. They swatch nice and everything, but on the eyes, they just don't apply as I'd like them to. They kind of apply a bit patchy. The matte shades are really, really nice, though. You can work with this palette if um, you don't like your eyeshadows to be too, like, ba-bam and, like, shimmery and stuff. This is a nice palette. It's nice and inexpensive. I think I paid, like, $5 for it, but it's not my favorite from Wet n Wild. I would probably just skip on that and go with the Comfort Zone palette. This palette is amazing. Compares to high-end quality, like, it's just these shades blend out so beautifully. I still want to do a tutorial with this bluey shade right here. It's so pretty, but this palette is amazing. I used a tiny bit of it on my eyes today, but... I would just go with this one out of all the Wet n Wild palettes. Go with this one. The quality is amazing. And you get a nice array of colors. I also have the Walking on Eggshells palette. Um, this is their trio. I would highly recommend this to anyone who's starting off with makeup and just needs a very basic, like, bland eyeshadow palette. You have a nice shade for your crease, a nice all-over lid shade, and a nice brow bone shade. It's a nice everyday, day-to-day -day palette for someone who's in work or in school and just wants to wear very minimal makeup. This palette right here is completely opposite of that. This is for someone who loves their colors, loves going bold. This is the Arts in the Streets palette. What I love about this is it's, is it's all matte. What I love about this is uh, that it's all matte. It's just a bunch of colorful shades. I actually used this in a tutorial I did like Rainbow Eyes. I'll link that down below. But um, yeah, they're a little powdery. I would recommend tapping off excess, but the colors are really nice. 
Now the next three palettes I have are kind of bummers, which is kind of sad because all the other palettes I do love, especially this Comfort Zone palette. I know Wet Mold, you can do them so well. I know you can do eyeshadows so well, so that's why I'm disappointed in these next three. And they're all limited edition palettes, and with Wet Mold, I feel like their limited edition products are just not comparable to their regular products. Their regular eyeshadow palettes are on point, and these three are just not, and I feel like that's because they're limited edition. I did a first impression on these two right here, and I was so disappointed. They are pig- not- these are not pigmented in any which way. They are patchy. They are just, um, like, really weird formula. They feel like sand to the touch, especially this shade right here. Like, can you guys hear that? Like, look at this. What is this? Like, what are you doing when, well, when you can do eyeshadow so good and you come out with these for the holidays? I was not impressed by these. Luckily, they're limited edition. You can't find them anymore, but you can still find the Comfort Zone palette, which I can't recommend enough. And then this is their Fantasy Makers Glitter palette in, uh, in the shade Pow Pop Diva. Also, I would just go with their regular glitters, not these ones. These ones were kind of meh. They didn't really show up, stuff like that. So those are the three palettes I would stay away from. The rest... I really like. Okay, I have some eyeliners to share with you guys. First are their Mega Liners. These are just liquid liners from them. I have two shades, black and bl this blue shade, which is um, called Voltage Blue. I'm wearing the black liquid liner right now. This has quickly become my second favorite eyeliner. Um, I love the applicator. The formula can smudge after like 12 hours of wear, so... It's still an amazing formula. This blue shade is so gorgeous. I highly recommend these if you're looking for a really inexpensive but good liquid liner. And then these two are from their Fantasy Makers line. These are also like liquid liners, but they're glitter liquid liners. And I talked about these in my, because I did a whole review on their Fantasy Makers line. And I talked about these and I said how I didn't enjoy them. They were just kind of weird. Um, they dried down and were kind of like... They would like crust up really weird, really gross, and they would just flake off, and it's a weird formula. I don't really recommend those, but their Mega Liners, really good. Again, with these limited edition products, there's something about them that I just don't like. And then I just have one like eyeliner pencil from them. This is in the shade You're Always White, and this is just a white eyeliner. Not my favorite, but not the worst. It's just meh. All right, some brow products. I used their... Um, Brow pencil today. This one's in the shade Brunettes Do It Better. I do like this. If you guys go for the intense brow all the time, this is a great, great drugstore brow product. If you want something more um, detailed, something you can really go in and detail, like do detailed work with, I would recommend like the NYX Maker Brow and not this because this one's kind of thick and this is just like literally you can just fill this in and not be too like picky about it if that makes sense. But it's a nice one. It's like $1.99, so if you're looking for something that will just fill in and you want like really bold, thick brows, this is something that's nice. This is the Mega Clear Wet n Wild Brow and Lash Mascara. This has become my all-time favorite brow gel. It sets my brows so nicely and it keeps them in place all day long without making them feel like hairspray, you know? Like they still feel nice and soft and I love this so much. It's like 99 cents, I highly recommend it. And then this right here is their Ultimate Brow Mascara and I hate this so much. And it's not really the formula, it's simply the color. My brows turn like this weird taupe color Definitely not my brow shade, and also I just don't really like the wand. Um, with this clear one, I don't mind. I like. I'm fine that the wand is so big because because it's clear, you can just you know do this, and then if you get some on the outside of your brow, it doesn't really matter because it's clear. But with this, because it's colored, the thing is just so thick that like you get it everywhere. Every time I've used this, like brow product gets everywhere and it creates a mess. And you have to go and clean it, and it's just a mess. So I would just. Stay away from this. I don't really like the formula that much either. It kind of makes my brows like look just overloaded with product. It doesn't make them look like nice and um, feathered out. So I'm not a fan of that. I have three mascara products to talk about. The first one is a primer. I forgot to use this in my tutorial, but I absolutely love this, guys. If I could recommend anything, I would recommend this. It compares to like high-end um, lash primers you know this just makes any mascara go on your eyelashes so well and it makes the mascara really coat your eyelashes nicely it's just like a white primer you just put it on then you put your mascara on top and it just makes your lashes look so nice voluminous long and everything like that 
And yeah, it's just a nice lash primer. I highly, highly recommend this. I have the Wet n Wild Max Volume Mascara Plus. This is the mascara I'm wearing right now, and I actually do really like it. If you're into very um, lengthening mascaras, I think you'll love this. Not very volumizing, but more lengthening, um, which is weird because the name is Max Volume, but I just see like lengthening in this it dries super super quick so if you want to do more coats like work quick with it the wand just helps make everything really nice for the lower lash line you can really coat the lower lash line nicely not my favorite mascara a little bit on the drier side but it is a nice one so from their fantasy makers line it's part of like their halloween collection again it's just a blue mascara and i do not like this at all um it's really weird it's almost like a powder consistency it doesn't coat your lashes very nicely dries really fast not a fan i have eight of the wet mod lipsticks i will go through the shades in just a second but first i'll talk about formula they are one of my favorite lipstick formulas ever i think they are beautiful on the lips they just look amazing i highly recommend these they're a matte but super hydrating formula i'm wearing one right now obviously and they never dry out my lips i can wear this a full day and my lips will not look dry at all but they still have that satin matte finish they are very long wearing the formula is on point and i love the color selection I really want to get like all of them because their color section is great. Let me just go through the shades really quickly. This shade right here is just peachy. It's just a nice peach shade. This one is my all-time favorite and one of my all-time favorite lipsticks in like out of all the lipsticks I have. This is the shade Bare It All and it's just the perfect nude lipstick. Like let me show you. Look at that. It's just so perfect and the formula again on point. This is in the shade Think Pink and it's just a like Barbie doll pink. Um, we have the shade Sandstorm and it's just like a nice orange tone copper. Um, mauve out of here. It's just like a nice mauve pink, hot pink shade. I love that one actually. We have the shade Mochalicious and this is just a deep like chocolatey brown. And then the shade I'm wearing right now is Cherry Bomb. All right, they're liquid lipsticks. I have two shades and these have become one of my favorite lip colors, favorite lip formulas ever. These are their matte liquid lipsticks and I have the shade Two Tulip to Quit and How Flick Is Your Love. I talked about these a lot back in September when I first got them. They're amazing liquid lipstick formulas. They last all day long. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. One of the best I've tried. And I feel like their darker shades aren't as good. So I would just go with these two right here. Last lip product I have is the Wet n Wild Lip Gloss. This is in the shade Sun Glaze. This is what this looks like. Super pretty color. It's just a nice nudie pink. Not my favorite formula though, but it's not bad either. It's just a nice gloss. I don't really have much to say about it. And the last makeup product is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus setting spray and I really love this one of my favorite setting sprays of all time I highly recommend this their nail polishes I've talked about so much but I'll talk about them again I have these two shades right here in the shade condensed milk and under my spell I'm actually wearing under my spell right now and look how pretty these are they are gel nail polishes but are beautiful you don't have to apply any kind of top coat they just wear like at least a week which is amazing with no chipping the color selection is really nice I highly recommend these and they're one of my favorite formulas as well all right now I won't say too much on this topic because I did a whole video on them but of course I have to talk about their brushes I do have most of them um, I am missing a few, but I do have most of the collection. I did use them in the tutorial uh, throughout it, but I do have a video uh, specific to these. The only brushes I didn't mention in the video are the large stipple, which is really nice just to blend out all your makeup once you're done to make sure there's no lines or streaks or anything. And also the uh, angled brush which is super nice for contouring it's become one of my favorite contour brushes but I'll link that video down below so you guys can check that out for yourselves so that's it for this video guys I hope you enjoyed as you can tell I love wet n wild it's definitely I, I'm gonna say it it's my favorite drugstore brand it's one of it is my favorite brand as a whole I think what they provide is amazing um, the quality they provide for the amount of money you're paying is out of this world crazy and the fact that they're cruelty free and they have such a good shade collection and they're always coming out with new um, like and fun products I love that about them I think they have some really good stuff a bunch of their things are like my ride or die products as you saw and of course there are some misses in within the brand every brand has some misses but overall wet and wild is amazing please take the recommendations i gave you guys but yeah that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed please subscribe if you haven't already make sure to check out the tutorial as well it will be linked down below i love you guys so much and i will see you in my next video bye